Well, welcome friends of St. Peter's to the weekly Wednesday prayer service of healing. At this service, we'll be using the readings from the Feast of Harriet Star Cannon. By clicking on the title of this video, you should be able to find the link to the bulletin for the service. But I found that most of you don't need the bulletin anymore. Let's have a moment of silence before we begin. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, who called Harriet Star Cannon and her companions to revive the monastic vocation in the Episcopal Church and to dedicate their lives to you, grant that we, after their example, may ever surrender ourselves to the revelation of your holy will through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you, Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings, for it is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by regulations about food, which have not benefited those who observed them, we have an altar from which those who officiate in the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of the, those animals whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also suffered outside the city gate in order to sanctify the people by his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp and bear the abuse he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we are looking for that, for the city is, that is to come. Through him then, let us continually offer sacrifice of praise to God that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 131. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I will still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. 
Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and, of, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You know, when I was going through trying to figure out what I wanted to say out of these lessons and also out of the colic, as normal on morning and evening prayer, I tend to be drawn to the holy person that we are to try to pattern our lives about. And in this case, here we're in the midst of Lenten madness, where we are considering, what is it, 64 different saints? And who is it that we are to emulate? Harriet Star Cannon, not even listed as a saint, but in our lesser feasts and fasts. As I mentioned at the beginning of the service, Harriet was born May 7th, 1823 in Charleston, South Carolina. She died April 5th, 1896 in Peekskill, New York. Now I want to read to you from the Wikipedia summary intro. Harriet Starr Cannon, nun who founded the Sisterhood of St. Mary, one of the firm, uh, one of the first orders of Augustinian nuns of Anglicanism, and which remains dedicated to social service. One of the first orders of Augustinian nuns in Anglicanism, and which remains dedicated to social service. Now, when I read that for the first time, I, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> uh, well, I could probably point out a large number of lay people who have been the first in their vocation, in the first of their profession, and who had dedicated themselves to social service. But then I was driving down I-5 the other day, and as things happen to me when I drive, things pop into my brain. And sometimes I can resolve the issues, and but in this case, it stuck with me. Now, how many of you are familiar with the concept six degrees of separation? Uh, the, the concept or the theory is all of us on earth are within six degrees of separation of every one of us on earth. That there is some connection that we may be in a small circle but that small circle is part of a larger circle, which includes others, which that circle is, includes a larger circle, which includes others. And in six steps, we should be able to make a connection to break that separation. Well, <laughs> the first one that, that hit me, she died at Peekskill, New York. This was where she had established the headquarters and I'll talk a little bit later about the sisterhood that she created. Well, 
those of you that knew my wife, Suzanne Foucault, you think because of her name, the French Canadian, but her mother's side, her maternal side, were New York Italians located in Peekskill, New York. Connection. I don't know. But in 1976, in visiting her cousin in Peekskill, I drove by the convent. Now, the next one, in her history, it's listed that she was orphaned September 30th, 1824, when her parents, both mother and father, within one day of each other, died of the plague of the yellow fever. September 30th is my birthday. Connection? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Now, as she grew, she was very, very close to her sister, Catherine. Catherine, my youngest child, Kit. This cat, formal name is Catherine, although we spell it with a K, not with a C. But Harriet was very, very close to Catherine. And when Catherine married and moved to California, Harriet was packing up and making all the arrangements to follow her sister to California. Is that another connection? But then her sister dies. An event that Harriet considered a major crisis in her life. And from best I can read their history, that's when she turned to the monastic life. And in March 6th, 1856, she was admitted to the Episcopal Order of Deaconesses. Now, the Order of Deaconesses, they preceded the recognition by the Episcopal Church of the vocational deacon, that person ordained to the diaconate with no intention of going forward to become a priest, or in her case, no ability as a woman to go forward and to become a priest. But the Order of Deacons is established for the Episcopal Church what a deacon should be. A deacon should be serving. A deacon should be fulfilling the second commandment of Christ, to love our neighbors. Another connection? Who knows? Now, in 1863, Harriet and four of her sisters were seeking a, a more traditional convent uh, role than the deaconesses, whereas the deaconesses tended to work sometimes individually, sometimes under the direct supervision of a bishop, but not as a sisterhood. So Harriet and her four, four sisters, they created what was originally known as the Sisterhood of Catherine, but later became the Sisterhood of St. Mary with a headquarters in Peekskill, Peekskill New York. Now, this order spread and grew, establishing schools, establishing hospitals, serving those in need. I wasn't able to find too much, but it spread not only within the Episcopal Church in the United States of America, but it spread into Canada. 
and something that really caught my eye. We've talked in the past in our own morning prayer about the martyrs of Memphis, of Memphis, Tennessee. The sisters who died with the priests in the plague of Memphis were sisters of St. Mary. Now, in the covenant, or excuse me, in the collect, it says, which remain dedicated to social service. Which remain. Well, there's a listing that in 2008, 2008, the Sisterhood of St. Mary merged with the American branch of the Sisters of Charity. I don't know if you remember the last time that I was here to celebrate with you morning prayer, but <laughs> who did we revere that day? The Sisters of Charity that also get known as Saint, uh, of St. Vincent de Paul, but were established by Marillac de Paul. Uh, excuse me, by Louise de Marillac. Another connection. Well, Harriet was not just a nun. She was a leader. She was a person who dedicated herself and became a living example of what it means to follow the second commandment. And in our colic for today, it states that we shall surrender ourselves to God's holy will in accordance with the example that she and her sisters set. Amen. Our Litany of Healing. Let us name before God those whom we offer our prayers, for whom we offer our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God, the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or recovering, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships to restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, paramedics, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. 
you have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now at this point in time, where we meeting in our church, we would all gather at the rail for the laying on of hands and anointing. I don't know exactly when we're going to be making that move, but I get a feeling of the discussion that's going on amongst staff and our vestry and amongst members of our anxious congregation that we're getting close to that time. But at this point in time, imagine that with your thumb, you are imprinting the cross that would be done by anointment and that you feel the hands of Christ on your shoulders. As we pray as Christ has taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father bless us, God the Son heal us, God the Holy Spirit give us strength. May God, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard our bodies, save our souls, and bring us safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.